Well, hello, welcome to Smells Like. I'm Josh, so good to see you. Uh, this is not a review. Um, this is just kind of an introduction, if you will. Um, this, is, this is just me introducing anybody who has never given it a shot to the legend that is Chanel Number no. 5. Uh, I have here the Modern Eau de Parfum. Chanel number no. five created came out in the 1920s, almost a hundred years on the market. The best selling perfume of all time. Uh, I believe a bottle of Chanel number no. five is sold somewhere in the world every 30 seconds or something like that was the statistic uh, that I heard. Um, I recently decided to give this a shot after really having written it off my whole life as a perfume for older women, you know, kind of an old lady perfume, um, something that my grandma wore my whole life, and so I always just, you know, thought I, anytime I smelled it, it would just remind me of my grandma. Um, never tried it for myself, and a few weeks ago, I decided to try it. I put put some on my hand, um, and and just, you know, started kind of think trying to think of it as just a smell. Not as Chanel number no. five, not as the scent my grandma wore my whole life, you know. Um, just a scent. Just put it on my hand and just tried to experience that just as the scent that it is. And in doing so, I really started to relearn it um, and really be introduced to it for the first time. Um, I've been wearing this quite a bit for the last couple of weeks and wearing it around and asking people what they think of the fragrance that I'm wearing. And absolutely every single person said they thought it, when I asked them if it smelled more masculine or more feminine on me, they said it smelled more masculine. Uh, no one, except for the one person who works in the fragrance industry that noticed that it was Chanel number no. five, no one said that it smelled like a feminine fragrance or that it smelled like an, you know, an old lady or, you know, an old fragrance, anything like that. In fact, many people thought that it smelled great. They thought that it smelled super classy, um, even a little bit, uh, like, like sexy kind of. So I really have been enjoying getting to know this, this fragrance. Um, and this is just my introduction uh, to men in particular, but any ladies that have never tried it too, I, I imagine there's probably a whole lot of younger women too that, that don't give Chanel number no. five a chance because again, it's, it's the fragrance that your grandma's wore, that your mom's wore, um, you know, it's, it's old fashioned or whatever. I really want to encourage you guys and gals out there, give this one a try. I would recommend trying the Modern Eau de Parfum, that's what I have here. Um, I think it's it's the most popular. It's the one that, that you're gonna see, I think, the most around. There are a few different versions of it, but the Modern Eau de Parfum is the one that I would try. And don't try it on a card. Don't try it in the air. Put it on your skin and get to know it. The aldehydes in this really do some magical things to where they do different things with different people's skin chemistry. Uh, and so there really is some magic with that, um, and, and the aldehydes are really what make Chanel Number no. Five so interesting. What set it apart um, when it was created almost a hundred years ago, and and it really it has a freshness, it has a soapiness. There's also a lot of depth and warmth in there. There are quite a few notes in here that are kind of more like classically masculine notes. There's vetiver, and oak moss, and sandalwood and vanilla, I mean, you know, the whole entire base notes of this fragrance are extremely unisex, if not maybe a little bit on the masculine side, just in terms of like kind of modern perfumery and the type of notes that, that are typically used in masculine fragrances. So the, the base notes, the dry down of this fragrance is phenomenal on me. Um, I would say anybody that likes the Dior Own line, uh, you know, in the same way that, that Dior Homme kind of has a little bit of a floral touch or like Dior Homme Intense especially has that really strong cosmetic, uh, powdery cosmetic thing um, with some other industry notes underneath it. it. I feel like Chanel Number no. 5 is in a similar 
uh, develops in a similar way. It has a cosmetic-y kind of thing with some floral notes, um, but then dries down to something altogether interesting. Again, the aldehydes in this are something and, and are the thing that really drew me to it in the first place. Um, I really had, had fallen in love with a lot of other fragrances from the House of Chanel. Blue de Chanel started me in my fragrance craze and into this hobby in the first place. And that brightness, that that Chanel DNA of the that, those aldehydes, that bright, clean, kind of shiny aspect of their fragrances, the more I tried other ones that had those aldehydes in it, the more I found I, I really love aldehydes in fragrance. They do something kind of magical. Fragrances like Cora Mandel from their exclusives line, Sycamore. There are plenty of guys out there that love Cora Mandel, that love Sycamore. There's plenty of guys out there that love number 22 from the exclusives. Number 22 was kind of my gateway drug to number five. I tried number 22 and it was this bright aldehyde bomb that smelled, you know, like a cloud on a sunny day, like literally like floating among the clouds. And somebody told me that's pretty much what number five smells like. So I went, started trying number five, and I was amazed how much this fragrance works on me, how classy it is, how kind of sexy it is. And I think if you want to stand out today, especially with all the same Z type designer fragrances that are out there, the designer fragrance counters are all same and the same and the same, this kind of sweet, fresh, sweet and fresh, sweet shower gel thing. If you want to set yourself apart, if you want to do something kind of alternative, I really feel like that's what I'm doing with this. When I wear number five, like I'm almost, I really want to feel like I'm starting a new trend or like doing something kind of alternative, kind of avant-garde. I think it would be really cool if, what if the, we started a trend of, you know, kind of stylish, cool guys wearing Chanel number five and that like becoming a thing. I think it would be a really cool thing. I don't really care so much about that part of it. I just think that would be kind of cool. I'm gonna be wearing it regardless. Um, you know, as far as like, if, if your mom or your grandma wore this fragrance, that was something that I had to kind of get over because my earliest memories of perfume were of my grandma's bottle of number five and, and of her, the, her, the smell of her perfume. Um, and that was kind of my earliest memories of what perfume smelled like and what, you know, class, classy ladies smelled like. So my grandma was, you know, really classy lady that I looked up to from an early age. Um, and, and so in learning the fragrance for myself, I kind of had to detach those memories and those kind of couplings with this fragrance a little bit and learn it for myself. And what I found is that I can keep those memories of how it smelled on her and how she carried it without thinking that I smell like my grandma or, or that every time I smell it in the air around me, I'm gonna think, oh, I smell like, you know, I smell like my grandmother. It hasn't been like that at all. In fact, it, it has really been the exact opposite. It's almost been a nice tribute to her and the way that she my whole life really was the biggest influence of getting me to try perfume. She bought me my first, uh, you know, colognes when I was a kid, my first bottle of Aqua Di Gio when I was in high school, she got it for me. Um, you know, even though it was like super expensive for a 15 year old kid to have, and I couldn't afford it, she got me that, you know, and that was like the first cologne that I really like, wow, this is so cool and fell in love with, um, you know, the, in the late nineties. Anyway, so for me, this, this really has a lot to it in that there's some heritage to it. I feel like there is a little bit of tribute to it, but there's also, there's a newness to it. It has all of this heritage and history into it, but there's also something that is ever new about it. That is, that, you know, every time I wear it, I feel like I'm, I'm starting a new chapter of this fragrance. Anyway, so that's about it. Uh, let me know in the comments how you feel about number five. Anybody out there that's tried it before, um, 
guys and gals uh, let me know if you kind of have some preconceptions and a little bit maybe some prejudices towards it that, it, that kind of have kept you or maybe as you're watching this you're thinking oh i don't know about that uh, let me know in the comments your thoughts on it uh, maybe some guys that have worn it and and, and love it i'd love to hear uh, your take on it uh, would love to hear from you in the comments and if you'd like to do this again sometime go ahead and hit that subscribe button see you right here at the smells like fragrance channel for another video next time. Thanks so much for watching.